for almost a year I've been thinking of getting a new laptop for my on-the-go video editing and personal software engineering projects. Looking at the options available, it is practically impossible to make a decent decision. I still try to make a good one based on my little experience of working with MacBook, Windows and Linux machines in the past. And I hope it will help you make yours. Hey guys, welcome to 100GP. I won't actually discuss about the specs of the laptop. I'll just jump into the story directly. Here is what happened. I bought a refurbished MacBook Air M1 2021TB. I came home, uh, saw another deal of a MacBook M1 Pro 14 inches for 400 bucks more. Well, better display, speakers, camera, processor, SSD, a fan, and 430 USBs more. I went back to the Apple store, I replaced it with the refurbished MacBook M1 Pro 14 inches, 512 GBs. So, after a ton of YouTube videos and even more contemplation, I thought, do I really need all of these? I can save 400 bucks and get a lighter laptop and additional 512 GBs. And guess what? After researching, I went back and changed it again and uh, finally I was back with my original purchase, MacBook Air 2020 M1 1TB. So, why a MacBook? I have two primary purposes for this machine. One is uh, on-the-go video editing and the other one is uh, personal software projects. I could have gotten a Windows laptop. Windows is not the best operating system for software development, even with WSL. A little background. I moved from MacBook to Windows three years back for personal software projects and the experience has not been better than the MacBook. I could see that the device emulators are slow, the text editors are sluggish, e even terminal doesn't give the proper experience. I could have gotten a Linux laptop, but then the video editing aspect would have suffered. MacBook is kind of that gives best of both of these worlds. And on top of it, awesome build quality and ultra lightweight. So a side note for you, uh, I'd say if it doesn't fit in your budget, please don't go for MacBook. It doesn't make any sense if because it's generally on the, on the expensive side. I won't even recommend a MacBook to my previous self back in the college because that would put like extra burden on my parents. Now people would suggest to like get the cheapest MacBook Air, which comes for around 900 bucks or somewhere around that, which is 8 GB RAM, 256 GB uh, SSD. Well, that's an option, but I would rather suggest to uh, get a Ryzen laptop and dual boot Windows and Linux and do whatever you want. Unless you really want Mac OS, it doesn't make any sense to go for it. Next, why not a MacBook M1 Pro? So I realized that MacBook M1 Air is like more than enough. I already have my RTX 3070 for uh, some serious workloads and practically I don't need that faster SSD or those better speakers or that better display. Processor is just about what 20 or 30 percent faster but M1 is already good enough and interestingly the benchmarks show that it is okay it is it is 20 30 percent better than M1 but even then there isn't a big difference in terms of uh, rendering speeds. The GPU is way faster in the 14 inches M1 Pro, but it's not needed unless I do some 3D stuff, which I don't plan to. But on the bright side, I get a lighter notebook. I get 512 GBs of extra space, which I feel is a real sweet spot. And I can utilize those 400 bucks to get an iPad maybe, or uh, get another camera lens for even better filmmaking or just do nothing and just save those extra 400 bucks. Okay, next, performance and Murray's law. Okay, I'm pretty sure that almost all the software engineers out there are aware of Murray's law. So it says that uh, in every two years, the number of transistors on a given integrated circuit doubles. In other words, the performance or the processing power of processors doubles every two years. Okay, it has been keeping pretty well so far, but it may be close to its end. We don't know. Anyhow, my concern is that even if it continues to hold, do the consumers today really need that extra power? A very simple example. So back in 2018, I was using this MacBook Pro 2016, which had i7 core i7 processor. It was a company's laptop. 
I was pretty happy with it. 10 minutes, 1080p, 60fps video used to render uh, in somewhere around 7 or 8 minutes if I remember correctly, which, which is actually pretty good. The most interesting fact is that even after 4 years, more or less, I and almost all the other YouTubers are still stuck on 1080p at max 60fps. Well, a few are indeed doing 4K, but 1080p is just about enough. So having said that, MacBook M1 Pro is already way faster than 2016 MacBook uh, Pro Core i7 which eventually means that this machine is more than enough. Okay, that's it. I have added links to all the videos that helped me arrive on this decision in the description below. So just feel free to go through them. If you are in the same karma. Thank you. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. I will see you next time. Make wise decisions. Bye.